game modes. The variety every multiplayer game needs to survive. Well, except that one. Without a handful of game modes, players just get bored. Sure, I guess you could just play two for all day, but one I must wonder how much sniping at the battlements is truly enough to handle. But lucky for you, TF2 have some of the most amazing and ridiculous game modes built right into it. Payload's great and so is Medieval. But what if you're like me and thought they'd seen it all? Well, I hate to break it to you. You have not. This game has so many game modes you've never heard of, and they're all found in one special place the community server browser. It is here where you will find some of the most crazy, strange, and sometimes brilliant game modes. And yes, that's where we're going today, as I take you on a trek through the unknown territory that is TF2's forgotten game modes. So I heard you guys like Medieval. This game sucks! And I heard you guys like Pastime. Oh, oh, oh. Well, what about NFL? Huh? In my humble opinion, Pastime is TF2's most underutilized game mode. The game mode itself is generally pretty fun, but the maps and balance just sucks harder than your typical scout on MVM. Oh, scout, just please just get the money! Oh, it sounds like my shit is done! <laughs> Like, the way the maps are structured and the game is balanced right now, the mayor is just one team all go scout and one team all go engineer. One team will be pushing constantly, doing anything to make some sort of progress, while the other team sits there and has a wanking contest and spawn. However, as we all know, where Valve lacks, the community more than makes up for it. Pastime is the fucking shit, man. It is intense, fast paced, and most importantly, hardcore! Uh, if that all seems like too much for you, here's something a bit more dumb, but still a lot of fun. I present to you Pass Pro Bowl RC1, or what I call it, NFL. This is literally just pastime on a flat map with only your melee, and it's so good. Fuck, no, don't fuck, actually go for fuck, it. Don't fight. Fuck, Stop fighting. Yes! Stop fighting. Yes! Touchdown! <laughs> The objective is the same as in real life, so for all my boys in the UK, I'll explain. You grab the ball, you bring the ball to the end, you get a touchdown, which is worth one point. However, if you shoot it in the goal, you can get two points. If you melee someone, you can steal the ball, and you can lock it onto teammates to pass. Simple as. This might not seem more than a gimmick, but keep in mind, this is medieval mode, so there's a little bit more to it. Typically, you'll see scouts the most, as they are the best at touching down. Demo Knight. It's a really strong attacking class because he can intercept anyone with his mighty charge. Medic and Sniper. Really strong defending classes as they're actually the only two classes who can shoot with their bows. Engineer. kind of sucks. Sorry, guys. Spy. People forget he exists in this game mode so you can do bullshit like this. Overall, this is generally one of my favorite community game modes. I'd say it's up there with like B-Ball. All you fat neeks who hate PE can finally get involved in this one. Trust me. Give it a go. There's only one server hosting it, so I'll put the IP on screen. I'll see you on the field. Use the Huntsman. This is like bullshit. Oh, you're not going to get me though. <laughs> Fort Wars is a new game mode developed with a scarily low amount of maps. The objective of the game is fairly simple. It just boils down to who can hold the intel for the longest time. But similar to the other maps on this list, the details are in this gimmick. The game mode will provide you an outlet to finally release your inner ninja and build props to your heart consent. You can build whatever you want. A few battlements here, a massive use of scare case here. Uh, if you're feeling creative, you always go down the path of just putting shit everywhere. No joke, it's just amazing how much you can dick around with a simple building mechanic. Fortunately, you can't just build willy-nilly. You've got to gather money by killing enemies, which you can use to buy structures. Some of them cost a bit more than others, but, you know, make as you do. The longer and longer these matches go on for, the more and more money you have, and the more complex the game can actually get. Since you'll be having so many more buildings, you can basically just recreate your own Capture the Flag map by the end of it. It's genuinely pretty amazing what the sum of the shit you can do. Unfortunately, there's only a few servers hosting this and not many people playing it, so you kind of have to put in some effort to get some boys on if you want to truly experience this wonderful game mode. Just don't be that fat neek who builds like fucking free fucking pipes on the center. Just like, what are you doing? Just like, fuck off. <laughs> Right, Mine Wars is a lot like Fort Wars, with one key different. What the heck? Yep, we play Minecraft! Your creativity is now limitless. Build a huge wall, boom. Build a sniper hut, boom. Build the other team's IP address, 
You already know it, mate. As long as it helps you bring the intel home, you are golden. I won't go super in-depth on this one, because it's basically just Fort Wars, but you can build up like Minecraft. But I'll mention it was all made possible with the magical invention of V-Script, which I'll be talking a little bit more about a bit later on. You'll be amazed at just how much you can fundamentally change how maps are played by just adding stupid shit like sticking this point on a fucking train with the amount of maps of Valve loves to stick trains in. It's pretty genius actually. Why not just make the train the objective? Don't get me wrong, this is a dumb map, but I'm not saying we should have a new map selection for train strand type game modes. But you can't look at this gameplay. Tell me this doesn't look fun. Every five minutes we had a new meta on this map. It was just like clockwork. First, everyone stacked as heavy, then we soon realised Pyro could just air blast everyone off. So then we all got on the lab and developed a new solution. We took a page out and meet the engineer and decided to use more gun. And then it just goes on and on and on from there with more and more counters and more and more gimmicks and more and more bullshit. It just makes you realise that getting to explore the game in even a slightly more different way that's not CP orange shitness or five hours straight of Badlands helps you rediscover how creative you can be when playing this game. Right, I've got a question for you Minecraft players. What is the most fun part of the game? Building Jenny Mine. Now, of how many of you were saying strip mining? <laughs> Have I got good news for you? Because, yup, they turned it into a game mode. In Underground War, the objective is simple. You must dig your way into the enemy base, steal their intelligence, and navigate your way back through the path you made. No breadcrumbs, just dirt. Well, this game mode sounds about as much fun as fighting Pyro in MGE. It's actually not that bad. Seeing you and the other team are digging the same path, and you finally end up meeting each other in the middle. That shit has me passing out. That is scary, bro. This one's really simple. You just kind of dig. So I won't go into too much detail, but I recommend it with a bunch of boys drunk because this shit gets crazy fast. Now, if you're a TF2 veteran, you might have heard of this bad boy before. Even Star made a video on it years and years ago, and has since then mysteriously fell off the face of the earth. If you've never played it before, think of it as just the non-shit version of the Saxon Hail. There is a team of red players who all need to team up to defeat one enemy spy. The only problem is that this spy, he's quite beefy. The spy has a large pool of health that regenerates with each kill he lands. He may also instantly come out of cloak, but you won't realise it till the second after being backstabbed. So yeah, this could make for a pretty fucking hard challenge on your hands. The great thing about this game mode is that it never feels too one-sided. There has been moments where the hidden is backed into a corner with seemingly no way out, only to get one crucial backstab that gets the ball rolling again. It's a strange seeing such a well-crafted and previously loved game mode fall into obscurity. I mean, for this video, we could only find one server running this, and it happened to be on everyone's die-hard favourite map, Well, So, I mean, it makes sense why no one was really playing this. If you get the chance, definitely give this game mode a whirl, as I'm sure you'll be pleasantly surprised with how engaging this can feel with a full server. This one's going out to all my Balloons TD6 players, so don't think I don't see you Quincy9000. I see you in the comments telling me to kill myself. Anyway, TF2 Tower Defense puts a new spin on the MVM formula. Rather than having you all play a key role in securing the defense for Manco, playing was one of the nine fun, unique mercenaries. You get to play as one, and you all have to share the metal, and you can only use sentries. But lucky for you, Grey Man was having trouble getting his copy of Windows Vista up and running. Therefore, the bots are only coded to move down a preset path. Therefore, you must place your sentries in the most strategic spots possible. You might think there's nothing more to this, but the game mode really does offer a cool upgrade system. You can actually spawn bots in as custom robots who will help you out in cool, unique ways. The Jirati bot will throw piss. The Pyro bot will air blast them back. The Habib bot will Habist on command. This makes the game mode actually pretty fun, since you're going to want to unlock and try out all the new cool robot towers and see how high of a round you can reach. With me and my boys, the highest we could get was 42. So if any of you beat me, I'll give you a free unusual. Just send me a screenshot down below and it's yours.
So what do you get when you combine the masterfully crafted mechanics of TF2 with the sheer awesomeness of Battle Royale? You get Fortress Royale by mod creators Mikish and 42. Here's how a typical match of Fortress Royale plays out. Everyone picks their class and the game starts. A battle bus flies overhead a gigantic map as players choose when to drop down. Everyone is equipped with their base jumper for a safe landing and after that, you're on your own. You must break open the crates littered across the map with your bare hands, having them drop random items from your chosen class's arsenal as well as other useful trinkets. After the truce period ends, that's when shit gets real. That's right, no teams, not even a fortress. Two. It's every man for himself for what is a genuine fight to survive. And don't get it twisted, weaker classes are buffed accordingly in really cool ways. Medic now builds uber and projectile shield passively to use for himself, and every class has doubled their base health. So you have a wide variety of choice when it comes to what kind of playstyle you want to go for. If you want to hear more about this awesome tastic battle royale video, then uh, click the link in the description or wherever party puts it, because there's a whole video of mine on the battle royale tf2 game mode and uh you know maybe watch it after you finish watching this one or maybe just like turn off this video like you don't really need to watch it, you know what i mean Alright, enough of actually having fun. Now it's time to dig through the incredibly shit or obnoxiously stupid game modes that need to be seen to be believed. If you've never played Zombie Escape, it's just basically an escape map where you, when, when you die, you turn into a zombie who can only melee. It's basically just infection or some, I don't know. Anyway, this section, it's not even about that. I just wanted to show you how fucking insane some of these maps have turned into. Like, what? What the fuck is this, bro? Tough ball? What? What the fuck? No! Boys, shit! Boys, look out! Turn us up close for spy! Bro, is that Hayden Fishing, so What the fuck? No! Scout, boys, scout! as I like to call it, the least fun you can have online. After waiting 90 lifetimes to join the server, you'll be put into a dark room or a forest to get eight magical fucking bongs or some bullshit to stop Slenderman getting his what white ass eye. Just for you to be killed by some bullshit you can't even fucking see. Follow me guys, I think- ah! What the fuck?! <laughs> what is going on?! What the fuck?! What is going on?! <laughs> I think my pal the bomb said this best when we were getting footage for this video. Uh, roll the clip. There's people who make community maps that are like genius and well loved and crafted, and people play this! Why? In conclusion, all these game modes I've listed today are available right now. So, what I'll do is I'll list as many IPs as I can right now so you can have a chance to experience these before they vanish forever. Community content fades as fast as it grows. For every great new addition, another has lost a ton. TF2 is blessed with one of the most passionate and creative communities for any game out there. With the addition of Vscript in the recent updates, community content has just been getting so much more creative and surprising. You're seeing stuff being done that you would never even believe was possible a couple years ago. So while it seems a new wave of TF2 community content is coming our way, I hope in this video I give you the opportunity to appreciate how we got to where we are now. A lot of these game modes are simple and ain't perfect. But they're all fueled by one thing, passion. Passion that has kept this game alive for years after it should have been dead. Passion that deserves your attention. Passion that deserves our respect. So next time you're playing the game and you don't know what to do, just give one of these servers a try. Because you never know, it might give you the feeling of playing this game for the first time all over again. That's all the game modes. That's it really, nothing much else to say I guess. Oh shit! I nearly forgot! I gotta go! I got it! Holy crap! Buddy Pug TV! What the hell are you doing here? Yup! That's me! Peter, no one knows what that is. Hey Brian, I left some of you in my car. I'll go get it for you.
Thank you.